I'm going to stand back here because I wrote some notes, unlike what I normally do, which is just wing it. Um, I viewed a videotape this afternoon. I believe it's the one that you're discussing about for tomorrow. Is this the one by Linda Thompson? Yeah. yeah. This uh, videotape is, in my opinion, a destructive cult propaganda masterpiece. This is not credible at all. Uh, well, we can go through the entire videotape at a later point. Tonight, I'm giving my, my bashing of the U.S. I'm government. Us we've had a to see well, I'm just telling you my opinion because I viewed it this afternoon. And, excuse me, if you, yeah, I'm stating it as an opinion. Okay? And if you're going to disrupt, I'm going to ask you to leave because there are people who've come a long distance to hear what I have to say. Um, thank you. And I'm extremely frustrated and horrified by what took place last year. Actually, the raid occurred a year from tomorrow. Um, I think that, uh, that the government was certainly uh, uh, ill-advised, ill-prepared, I think, the, uh, to attempt to, uh, a forcible assault, as, the, as they did, with with women and children in a compound such as that was just uh, beyond stupid. Good for media, good for, you know, hype, good for, you know, Rambo style of things, but uh, in terms of serving the public good, I think it was, was horrible. And uh, unlike what destructive cults like Scientology, the Moonies, and other groups that I criticize that say that government has no right to go there at all, I do believe they had a right to go there to investigate arms, uh, to look after people's well-being, including the, the uh, alleged sexual abuse of minors uh, and such. Uh, clearly, in, in, in retrospect, what the government should have done was, was, uh, was taken David Koresh when he was jogging, when he was in town having a cheeseburger, uh, or lure him into town. And from there, they could have sent a, a handful of, of uh, agents to investigate the premises, and then it would have been a non-event. But unfortunately, they didn't do that. And uh, I also want to state that um, I have no inside track of information. I've never talked with the FBI. I've not talked with any, any insiders. Um, and so all of my information is based on, on uh, uh, interviews that I've done. Uh, with people uh, as well as media and such. So I'm sure there's lots more information that will come out later about what, what, what information was available. So I just wanted to, to, to give that uh, disclaimer too that I don't have the full facts, but I can tell you that, that it's clear by the government's activities they do not have an idea about destructive cult mentality. They were treating this as a criminal operation uh, they, were, they were treating David Koresh as a con man who was out to just, uh, was a psychopath. And uh, like most cult leaders that I've studied, he was a victim of a cult himself. And, uh, uh, and, and there's a parallel with many cult leaders, too, in that, uh, with, with sexual perpetrators, and that many of, of the sexual perpetrators were victims of child sexual abuse themselves. Uh, Vernon Howell turned into David Koresh, and uh, uh, Vernon's shadow side became dominant. Um, my orientation, my background, is that I was in a cult. And uh, I was in a cult for two and a half years. I was in the Moon organization. I actually was involved in recruiting and indoctrinating people into the Moon organization. I know how cult leaders think as a generalization based on what has since become 17 years of my life work and research and helping hundreds of people involved with many different destructive uh, groups to get out. Um, I also want to comment that I made numerous efforts to try to correct the situation after the, the, uh, uh, the initial assault. I approached my congressman, Joe Kennedy's office. They no wrote numerous letters made many, many phone calls to the Department of Justice encouraging them to get in touch with me. They did not. Uh, I faxed a letter to George uh, Stephanopoulos. Uh, actually, the letter was to President Clinton. 
Um, I faxed a, a letter was faxed to attorney Massachusetts Massachusetts Attorney General uh, Harshbarger's office directly to Janet Reno. Um, and in fact, uh, I'd like to read you a portion of what I wrote uh, in that fax, which was March 30th. Uh, the compound went up in flames on April 19th. <coughs> dear, dear Attorney General Reno, I am contacting you in regards to the FBI operation in Waco, Texas. I am absolutely certain that the tactics currently being used will not result in a speedy, peaceful resolution of the standoff. This is not a typical criminal operation. This is a cult mind control situation. And I go on and, and actually uh, outline some of the things that I'll, I'll cover in a minute in terms of things that they should have done that would have resulted in a peaceful um, um, intervention. Um, also, uh, Eleanor Atchison handed a copy of my book to Webster Hubble one week, approximately one week before the final assault was given. Uh, my book, by the way, has been out since 1988. You can go to B. Dalton's. It's out. It's uh, widely regarded as the best book on the subject of cults and mind control. And, um, but, uh, and I know that Belinda Gainham, whose son David Thibodeau, was one of the few survivors who, who was able to escape the flames, um, gave copies of my book to FBI negotiators in Waco, Texas, prior to the assault as well. Um, but I've never been called. And uh, I've never been contacted, in fact, even though there was supposedly going to be a follow-up investigation into how to prevent future tragedies from occurring. And in fact, uh, I believe there's been a big whitewash. It's been, it's been a political whitewash. Uh, and, I, and I truly believe that because of the government foul-ups from the very beginning that men, women, and children are dead that should be alive. 